Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We're honored to have Mr. Hobson, who's a proud member of the RV, uh, the Royal Veterinary uh, College uh, since summer of 2008. He's responsible for leading the development and implementation of the Royal Veterinary College's undergraduate and postgraduate recruitment strategy, both within the UK and internationally, ensuring that all activities, all activities are accessible to all no matter the background and location and support the student's journey from discovery um, to the point of uh, the point of career through the uh, admission process, application admission process. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much uh, for, for having us. Uh, I'm hopefully just going to share my screen, which I think is uh, coming up now. Fantastic. Um, Thank you very much for, for having us. Thank you very much for, for attending, whether that be watching live or um, watching back on the uh, the YouTube channel. Um, hopefully over the next hour, I've got a couple of uh, objectives for us to try and meet. So uh, I'm conscious that uh, you might not have explored UK education before. So I'll try and contextualise how we typically run uh, the veterinary medicine programmes within the UK, which is quite reflective of Europe as well. Um, as was mentioned a second ago, um, my experience has been at the Royal Veterinary College for the last uh, over 16 years. So that's what I'm going to primarily focus on linking our course to the application process. And if you have any questions throughout, then please do feel free to uh, to ask them uh, and there will be time at the end as well. So with regards to the Royal Veterinary College, we uh, were the first English speaking veterinary school in the world founded back in 1791. So have a long and proud history and were the second uh, institution outside of North America to achieve AVMA accreditation. So as you might or uh, might not be aware, that's the governing body in North America, which allows uh, our graduates to um, go and work either back in North America if they're uh, residents or uh, subject to visas to uh, go and work there as well. Um, in terms of everything we do as a university, our sole focus is to improve animal health and welfare. So we aim to achieve that through the dissemination of that experience, expertise and knowledge that we've garnered over those 230 plus years. We have a number of clinics, hospitals, um, where we want to ensure the highest standard of veterinary care is delivered to those patients and their, uh, their owners. And we also want to, through scientific research, push through perhaps the current limitations of veterinary sciences so that in the future, we are able to treat patients whom we perhaps cannot treat today. And all of those things fairly logically link into one another with regards to our veterinary medicine programme. Obviously, we're going to be educating our students, but uh, the veterinary students will be doing placements within those hospitals and clinics, which I've mentioned, and any pertinent research will be um, applied to the clinics, applied to the curriculum. Because of that very specialist focus, so uh, animal uh, welfare, essentially, we only have about two and a half thousand students, which even for a UK university is pretty small. Uh, the average university might be somewhere in the region of 15,000 students. So we are very specialist and have two campuses uh, that houses us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, despite being relatively small in size, um, we have a student community across all of our programmes from over 70 countries and members of staff from almost uh, 100 countries around the world. So it really is a nice, uh, inclusive, global uh, outlook to the institution and lots of different accents, not just my boring English accent that I have here. With regards to our Bachelor of Veterinary Medicine program, or BVET Med for short, which is our qualification that uh, students will use to uh, practice as a as a vet, 
Um, I mentioned that we're AVMA, so we're North American accredited currently. We're also UK, European, and our graduates can work in uh, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and uh, the Republic of Ireland, amongst some other locations. So I guess that's probably, um, I guess, one of the reasons that we have uh, so many nationalities represented across our student community because it is really a global um, passport. So how we approach our degree programme or how we design and reflect and review our curriculum, which we're constantly uh, doing to make sure we maintain or improve our educational standards is we look at what we believe a, a good veterinarian to be and ensure that we instill those skills uh, such as problem solving, uh, independent learning, integrity, resilience, etc., and then implement that into our particular curriculum. Um, in terms of the part of our curriculum that we feel really does prepare our graduates going into the profession is the professional competence. So where that um, scientific and uh, clinical understanding overlaps with uh, the professional attributes as well as the clinical skills um, is where we want our graduates to be. So before we go into that in a bit more detail, uh, with regards to the general education structure, typically within the UK, uh, and within Europe, students are typically coming from high school onto a five-year uh, undergraduate uh, veterinary programme. So in the UK, students um, typically start to specialise within the sciences a little earlier than uh, is the case in North America, specialising in typically uh, solely three subjects, for the last two years of their high school education uh, and then we'll be joining a five-year uh, veterinary program. That being said, we also offer perhaps the more traditional North American route as well. So students who have come from high school, come out of high school, done their undergraduate degree program and then uh, after that gone on to a four-year, what we would call a graduate accelerated veterinary medicine program. So we have both routes available and throughout the presentation I'll try and um, convey the differences between those two opportunities um, and if it gets confusing as I say please just uh, please just ask questions um, or hold them to the end depending upon your preference. So going back to the curriculum into a bit more detail um, generally speaking, how we would focus is start with the um, basic sciences. So the foundation of any um, of most veterinary programs are you're learning about the healthy animal, essentially. So we deliver that uh, with the primary focus years one and two of the five year course or years one of the four year graduate accelerated program. We focus on the anatomy, the physiology, the biochemistry, the animal handling and the animal husbandry side of things. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, you won't be learning about um, sort of the species by themselves. So you wouldn't be learning about cats solely on Monday and then dogs on Tuesday. In terms of the RCBS, which is the UK governing body, the equivalent to uh, the AVMA, um, they stipulate that they want us and other UK veterinary schools to graduate what we call omnicompetent veterinarians. So that means uh, veterinarians who can treat any animal species uh, with the exception of humans, of course. So for that reason, what we believe helps to develop the professional competence um, is teaching comparatively. So we will teach various uh, strands, which are typically systems. So you'll learn about the reproductive system of all of the commonly encountered species. So that's typically small companion animals, large companion animals and production animals. You might touch a little bit <clears throat> on exotics. Um, then 
once you've compared and contrasted the reproductive systems of those various species, you might then move on to focus on the uh, cardiovascular system of those animals and so on and so forth. And I'm not suggesting you would learn that all in one day. Um, we would typically go around uh, all of the body systems in year one and then revisit them in year two, building on that knowledge that you had in your uh, first year if you're on that in the five-year program or it'd be slightly expedited on that graduate accelerated four-year program uh, because you've only got a year there then we move on to more of the paraclinical side of things so that's uh, a focus more on the unhealthy animal which typically uh, reaches its height of concentration in the third year of the five-year program or the second year of the four-year program with the last two years of the degree course almost exclusively focused on the um, clinical components or clinical practice elements of the program and throughout all of that we're teaching in terms of a, a strand basis so anything you're taught in a previous year or previous years you will revisit at least once so that it's not a case of you having to remember something you did in your first year and you've not learnt it again uh, until your final examinations um, so always revisiting and building on what we've taught formally so the first two of those years are based at our Camden campus, which is in central London. Um, if you can see the V on the Royal Veterinary College logo in the centre, um, just here between campus and that V is where the king at the time put us in order to prevent us from infecting the human population, which you can see from this map is closer to the River Thames, which is uh, meandering through roughly the centre of the, um, the the line drawing here. Um, <clears throat> the place that we're based called Camden, uh, that was the, formerly the farmland of London. So we had uh, nice lush, lush pastures uh, and our campus looked a little or something like that. Uh, particularly around the Industrial Revolution and um, uh, 1900s, we started to uh, see roads popping up uh, all around us. We started to see neighbours coming uh, into the land that was that was formerly ours. And um, the campus was somewhat transformed from a very rural field station into one which is uh, reflective of a university campus in the heart of uh, the UK's capital. So we're in zone one of the metro system and our footprint is the majority of this uh, triangular looking shape in the centre of the photo here. Whilst it is a listed building, so it's a 1940s uh, 45 building. Um, we're constantly uh, investing into the teaching facilities and resources for our students. So this is our light well. Um, you can see perhaps uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you that there are some skeletons which have come out of our museum, which are through the luminous green doors. We've got a cafe where this photo is taking place, uh, taken from is where our students' union are based. Uh, the uh, grey shutters towards the left-hand side of that um, pod, as we call it, the uh, brown structure with lights on the underneath is where our main lecture theatre is, and it connects our learning resource centre, student common room, um, and basically all areas of campus. If we go into our anatomy museum, uh, as I sort of briefly touched on a second ago, our focus is the healthy animal. So the majority of our specimens and skeletons are focused on uh, teaching the anatomy and physiology of the healthy animal. Um, up at our other campus, which is where the final three years of all the veterinary programmes are Taught. that's where we have a pathology museum where we focus more on the paraclinical side of things. In terms of the preclinical years, which are based at the Camden campus, so as I say, year one and two of the five-year programme, year one of the graduate accelerated programme, um, we do work with live animals typically, as well as we have um, donations and specimens volunteered to us so that students can observe pre-prepared dissections and or uh, sort of 
wet dissection so fresh dissections and we also have our own plastination unit so if you ever seen the Gutha von Hagen's body world uh, then we have the same technology so that any specimens that are donated to us we can essentially remove the water and replace it with a resin or a plastic uh, and then that's a teaching resource for uh, as long as that um, as that specimen lasts for so uh, a very vital resource there um, we do have accommodation on site, um, although this uh, photo is shortly to be no longer representative of uh, the student bedroom because we're refurbishing it throughout this academic year with it opening in September of um, 2025. Um, but generally speaking, uh, rooms at the RBC will most importantly perhaps have a desk for you to do your studies uh, a bed bedside cabinet somewhere to put your clothes as well as uh, the majority of RBC accommodation being ensuite facilities as well so we do have a few other options which are uh, based either around the rest of London through our University of London halls and we also have a larger facility Mary Branker house which is about a 20 minute walk away So delving a little deeper into um, the veterinary curriculum, which I uh, briefly touched on, uh, these are the various strands which a student would focus on um, typically within the first year of their five year degree programme. As I say, each one of these strands would be focusing on comparing and contrasting the various species which one needs to know about because our programme is taught comparatively. Um, despite the graphic perhaps insinuating, uh, you wouldn't um, do one of these particular strands, then move on to the next one. They are all, um, the majority of them are all covered at the same time and focused on throughout the first year. With regards to the second year of the programme, and I'll flip back and flip forwards a few times just so you can hopefully get a sense of uh, the repetition. So in terms of um, if we're looking for some of the new strands that we introduce, you can see the endocrine system, lymphatic and the skin um, typically isn't part of the first year of our five year programme but does get introduced in year two of the five-year program. The rest we will be revisiting following the education that you receive in year one of the program. Now, on our five-year program, we typically welcome around 160 students, um, whereas on our graduate accelerated uh, veterinary medicine program, we would typically be welcoming, welcoming around 100 students, so a slightly smaller cohort. And as you would no doubt expect with a student who has a background of a three or four year science undergraduate qualification, they are going to be at a higher scientific knowledge than even the most dedicated, committed and intelligent high school students because they have focused for three four years at a higher level solely on the sciences. So the reason that we're able to have a slightly shorter program is because some of the basic sciences we don't need to cover because a student is already, already at that university level. So in terms of the curriculum, what we tend to be able to do is cover a lot of those strands within our animal form and function. So whilst it might look um, perhaps less intense, it is in fact a more intense year one than the year one of our five year program. Um, we don't um, necessarily, um, it's a bit more, it's not modularized, but it feels a little bit more modularized than our five, first two years of our five year program. So um, in terms of what year one can potentially look like for the uh, the four year program, because I felt that that previous slide didn't necessarily um, demonstrate uh, as well our strands as the five year graphics did. As you can see, there's a number of strands being taught at uh, the majority most uh, times of the year. Generally speaking, for whichever course you are studying on, 
the last week of September is the sort of welcome or induction week. And then your studies typically start uh, for real in October. Now, as you get later on in the course, you'll find that um, the degree course starts earlier and earlier to the point where um, sort of the year, the final two years, your summer vacation isn't as long as perhaps it might than it was in previous years or you might like it to be. But generally speaking, starting in September, going through to uh, mid to late December, where you'll have your uh, Christmas break, then resuming in January, um, right up until sort of the Easter or spring. And then after spring, coming back um, until the early July period. For most years of the course, we have sort of a final system. Uh, so what that means is that um, you will be assessed on everything that you've covered that particular year or in the previous years of the programme. Um, but hopefully with that spiral curriculum, you are constantly revisiting it. So we're not testing you on something that you haven't uh, learned about or haven't thought about since the first year when you're in the third year, uh, for example. In terms of we're always asked about what a typical week can look like, and it's almost impossible to to demonstrate what a typical week looks like, um, because depending upon the strand that we're talking will influence how we teach it. And because there are certain times where we want students to be in smaller groups, we have um, uh, we repeat the schedule. Um, so those X's just indicate times in this particular week where one wouldn't be having to sort of go back to back because it's a repetition you'll be allocated one group or another with regards to the uh, Wednesday afternoon time period in the UK uh, most degree programs are not scheduled for teaching so that you can enjoy um, a bit of a break catching up on your work part-time employment uh, generally a bit of sort of well-being time because veterinary medicine is a very practical degree, we require students to uh, essentially gain work placement, typically during their vacation periods. So that is currently um, students need to complete 10 weeks of animal handling placement. So we're teaching through our curriculum about the healthy animal. We want you to see those healthy animals in a business environment so that you can develop your handling uh, and learn how to look after animals because that's going to be integral um, before you then start trying to treat the unhealthy animal. So for the preclinical years, uh, London is definitely your campus. We are about two and a half miles from the Houses of Parliament, um, mile and a half from Leicester Square, Covent Garden. Platform nine and three quarters is a 10, 15 minute walk because that's the, uh, the closest station to our Camden campus. And we have Camden Lock, uh, where there's a, a range of sort of street food sellers, restaurants, cafes, uh, bars, and the, the canal runs right through. Uh, the the uh, Camden area as well. Obviously, London is very well connected uh, with uh, six major airports, depending upon who you categorise a London airport. And we're linked to the European train network through the Eurostar terminal, which also departs from King's Cross, St Pancras station. So uh, you can walk from uh, Camden campus to King's Cross and Pancras in about 15 minutes and then you could be over in Paris in around about a couple of hours if you wanted to. Whilst London is quite an urban uh, city there's almost 5,000 acres uh, through our um, parks including our Royal Parks. There is um, a high concentration of university students uh, as well as world heritage sites lots of museums to attend uh, a large number of those being uh, free to attend for students the weather isn't perhaps as good as california but um, it isn't perhaps as bad as you might think it is uh, i would always say that uh, the weather in the uk is probably more changeable so we definitely have seasons um and you could uh, could be one day where it's nice and sunny uh, you have a bit of rain 
around lunchtime and then it could be freezing cold in the evening so changeable is probably the best way to describe the weather in the UK and it's not as wet as perhaps films or, or myths might suggest um, in in London. So that covers sort of the pre-clinical years of the programme or pre-clinical year of the programme. We move students up to our, uh, what we would call our field station for the final three years of the programme. And this is the realtors listing of uh, Bolton's Park Farm and the Hawkshead Estate when it went uh, on uh, went up for sale and we jumped at the opportunity. We've made quite a few changes since the mid 1950s when we purchased uh, this field station. As you can get a sense of the aerial shot here, it is uh, a very different and perhaps more tranquil way of life to the, the buzz of the city which we have down in London. So here we have almost 600 acres, uh, including our own farm on site. You can see the sports pitches towards the bottom of the screen. Towards the left hand side uh, is where our uh, sports centre is, where our student village area is, where our main teaching facilities are in the centre. And then the right hand side uh, is where our clinical teaching and clinical facilities, including hospitals, are based. Amongst those hospitals, we have the Clinical Skills Centre, which is an environment for students to practice their day one clinical skills. So from the third, from um, the first year that you're at our Hawkshead campus, you would be undertaking clinical skills uh, teaching so that you are confident and competent when you start going on your clinical placements. We I mentioned that we have a farm on site, so we're working up to around a 150 herd size. It's a dairy farm predominantly, um, but we also do have ewes and lambs in the February, March period, which is our lambing season. Uh, we have chickens provided on campus catering with uh, bite through their eggs. Uh, and um, sometimes we have turkeys in the lead up to the two Thanksgivings and Christmas as well. <clears throat> We have accommodation on site, so essentially the same resources that I mentioned uh, as was in the majority of our accommodation. Um, slightly different finish currently because at the time this photo was taken, this was newer than the, the facility that we're renovating at the moment in London. With regards to the final three years of the programme and this where it gets a little bit more confusing, um, the students on the five year course will have done year one, year two, and then go into year three of the programme, whereas the graduate accelerated students will have done the first year at Camden and then they would join the third year of the five year programme. So that community of 100 students joins with the approximate 160 students on the five year course. Um, so you're making a student community of around 260 up to 300 students so five-year course years one two three four five graduate accelerated program year one year three year four year five <clears throat> so as you will uh, no doubt um, be able to see there's a yet more repetition we're revisiting a number of the strands that we've already come th uh, that we've taught in either year one or year two and or in the graduate accelerated uh, year the one thing that we uh, introduce typically from the middle of one's third year is what we call clinical extramural studies so that's placement in uh, hospitals and clinics outside of the Royal Veterinary College. So that's why that uh, clinical skills teaching is so important uh, because you want to feel safe, confident and competent before you have to demonstrate those skills with um, perhaps a patient who is less amenable than a teddy bear, which a lot of our uh, clinical skills resources are animal models or amended teddy bears in order to practice in a safe environment for both the theoretical animal as well as the student themselves. With regards to the final two years of the programme, it is almost exclusively clinically focused. So here you are going around, typically our rotation groups are anywhere between six to ten on average, 
uh, students on a rotation group and you will be going around our various services to make sure you get a breadth of experience um, and there is some opportunities which I'll talk about a little bit later in terms of being able to focus on an area of interest that you have but it wouldn't be to the exclusion of all uh, the commonly encountered species that I mentioned a short while ago. So you would still graduate as an omnicompetent veterinarian. So if we move on to sort of delving a little deeper into the final two years of the, uh, the veterinary programme at the RVC, these are what we currently do. They are always under review, so can uh, change. You'll do core rotations, which I'll talk about a little bit more. And I was just mentioning about having a slight focus in your degree program towards an area of interest that you have. Uh, we call that tracking. So typically that's two, three week blocks, sorry, three, two week blocks uh, where you can apply to focus on a particular area that you perhaps want your career to go down in so you might think actually i want to do some more equine experience so we go down that particular track with regards to the extramural studies so that is the placements which i mentioned outside of the royal veterinary college um, the requirement at the moment is that you have 20 weeks of um, experience in external practices we also do a, a research program um, so you would be doing a piece of independent research and we have two weeks of, of taught electives where you can choose which uh, which electives you want to uh, sort of sign up for and or attend. So when you are within those uh, clinical placements, you will be under supervision, but you're not going to be static observers. You will be responsible for patients and being part of the clinical team to make sure that we provide the best possible um, level of care for the animals whom are trusted in our, um, in our care. Because of that, um, and as with human medicine, it is the case that um, you will be doing some night shifts. It's not a nine to five degree program because it's not a nine to five profession. So you will be uh, allocated night shifts as well as um, shifts within the typical, let's say, academic teaching hours. Uh, I hasten to add not back to back. So in terms of some of the example core rotations, we want to make sure you're uh, comfortable with small animals, uh, large companion animals like equine, um, as well as production animals uh, and pathology. So all students currently will go through these particular rotations. We are constantly tweaking them. Um, so uh, do check our website for more information on that. In terms of the clinical facilities that our students have the opportunity to rotate around, we have our Beaumont Sainsbury Animal Hospital, uh, which is a first opinion um, practice. Uh, so like the vet practice you might see at the, the top of your road or on your high street and where students um, within the RVC get their, their first or their most um, comprehensive experience to a typical veterinary practice. When I say typical, the reason I say that is because we have a number of referral hospitals. So we have our Queen Mother Hospital for Animals, which is the largest referral hospital in Europe. So only the most sort of complicated cases typically come through our doors here uh, at the QMHA. The exception to that is we do have um, an emergency out of hours first opinion service uh, with regards to that around 40 odd um, local practices basically send their emergency cases straight to us so rather than trying to page or locate the veterinarian they will uh, their clients will simply come straight to the RVC for us to um, treat that emergency case. We also have uh, our equine ambulatory and equine referral hospitals as well. So the ambulatory practice is uh, a series of seven or eight jeeps that go out and treat patients in the field, whereas if they cannot treat them in the field, they'll refer them back to our, um, our 
equine referral hostel, as will other practices, again, for those more complicated uh, cases that, that would require uh, more specialist attention. We also have a number of regional centres. So as you would probably guess, in the centre of London, there's not as many uh, farms as there is in more rural areas of the UK. So predominantly down in the southwest. So um, in Dorset and Hampshire, we have some partners who are aligned with our curriculum to ensure that they are training our students in production animal medicine in the same way that we're teaching students within our clinics and hospitals, which are on site. Now, some of the current tracking opportunities, um, and we've separated them here into sort of uh, some more distinct um, categorization. So you can focus more on small animals, equine or farm, as well as doing more research or focusing on exotic animal medicine. And as with our core rotations, we're constantly reviewing and tweaking uh, the opportunities for our students to ensure that they get the best experience before joining the veterinary profession. And here are a few examples of some of our partners, including ZSL London Zoo, which um, we work with on one of our exotic animal tracks. So before I move on to sort of the entry criteria and um, the tuition fee side of things, I just wanted to finish off by sort of, uh, I guess, trying to summate a five and a four year course um, based on what I've already um, shared with you guys. So the first uh, year or the first two years, if you're on the five year program, is focused on uh really establishing those foundation skills and knowledge in the basic sciences animal handling husbandry uh physiology biochemistry amongst other things that will be added in terms of practicality through those animal husbandry extramural studies uh those uh, 10 weeks of placements that one needs to do during your vacation periods within the final three years, focusing a lot more on the clinical teaching um, in terms of being within hospitals for almost exclusively the final two years. And in addition to going through our own hospitals, you'll be going through um, uh, hospitals, clinics, practices, which are external to the RVC. Now, um, with regards to extracurricular activities, uh, there are a range of sports clubs and societies at the Royal Veterinary College. So those Wednesday afternoons, which are typically off, the exception being those final two years when you're on clinics. Uh, these are ever changing as well. So please do go on the Royal Veterinary College's Students' Union website uh, to see all of the current sports clubs and societies which are available for um RBC students. In terms of our tuition fees, uh, this year our tuition fees for international students, so non-UK students uh, or non-UK residents is £44,610 per year. That's excluding the uh, accommodation costs and um, general living costs. So typically we tend to find we are um, sort of mid-range uh well in the middle of the tuition fee level if you were to compare us in terms of in-state or we're um ever comparably uh slightly lower in the listings if you're looking at out-of-state tuition fees but that very much depends upon the state whether the state has any agreements with vet schools in neighboring states etc etc we do have one tuition fee waiver, um, which is provided to the best applicant that we receive from uh, an international um, location. So UK students cannot apply for that. It's only for international students. We will select uh, a shortlist and invite that shortlist to share with us why they feel they uh, are would be befitting of receiving a uh, tuition fee waiver for each year of the programme which they are studying with ourselves. So um, we have two potential routes into the application process. 
if you are applying from a North American university, you would be applying through uh, VIMCAS, V-M-C-A-S. If you are a high school student, you would apply through UCAS, which is the UK equivalent of VIMCAS, essentially. So if you're a high school student applying, it would be through UCAS, U-C-A-S dot com. If you are a North American university student, it will be through VIMCAS. Now, because we welcome students from over 70 nationalities, we have a wide range of entry criteria. We accept both Canadian and US students from high school. Um, we would be looking for students to undertake uh, AP um, classes in both biology and chemistry with grade five being achieved in those two subjects plus one other. Um, or as you can see uh, with the rest of the qualifications, we're looking for high achievement. And if it isn't listed here, then you can email us admissions at rbc.ac.uk and or visit our website um, if you want to see whether we would uh, accept the qualification or qualifications which you are currently studying. In terms of our graduate accelerated programme, our um, requirements for that are typically around a 3.2 to 3.4 GPA. Um, in both overall and within the sciences. And we have certain prerequisites in terms of the, the classes and where you get those credits from, which you can see on the right bottom side of this table, all of which are listed on our website. So in terms of what we're looking for candidates, because it's a very intense degree programme, five years in duration or even four years in duration in the case of the Graduate Accelerator programme, we want students to have a real passion for the veterinary um, career. Uh, we want to see a clear demonstration of motivation and dedication towards joining that profession. That might through, be through work experience, which I'll talk about in a minute. And we want to see that they have the skills and attributes to be successful within the uh, veterinary profession. So we have a practical requirement that students undertake 70 hours of clinical experience plus 70 hours of other animal handling experience by the time of application, which is either mid-September for the VIMCAS system or mid-October for the UCAS system. Um, we need 70 hours of clinical and 70 hours of non-clinical experience. And we need both of those um, requirements to be completed within 18 months of making an application. We also have a supplementary form. So students will be emailed and have to complete within five days uh, our supplementary form, which is on our portal. Here you will list all of the work placements that one has undertaken, uh, where you've done it, duration, dates, contact details, as well as answer a number of short answer questions. Typically, each of the three short answer questions are around uh, 300 word responses being required. Now, the big things that we would always suggest is make sure you answer the question. Some students read the question and answer, just tell us about themselves unrelated to the question. Um, there's also no advantage to submitting it any sooner than the five days that you have. So I would always say, make sure you spend your time and prepare the answer that you are going to submit. We don't have any requirement for any form of admissions test. The only thing outside of either the VIMCAS or the UCAS application uh, is this supplementary form. So with regards to uh, our student selection process, we interview all students before making an offer. We interview in North America, typically in November. And we have a multiple mini interview format. So a student will go around six different stations uh, being asked and being assessed on different skills on each one of these stations uh, for us to see whether the person who has applied on paper, so to speak, is the same person who 
is opposite us or in person at interview and has those communication skills, which is integral, we believe, to our curriculum and the veterinary profession, whilst we would also develop those skills throughout the time with us. In addition to the six stations, each with each one of which being five minutes in duration, uh, we run a group task to make sure that you can work as part of a team as well as uh, communicate well on a one to one basis. In terms of the types of questions that one might be asked, you are probably going to be asked about your work experience so we can see how proactive you were in that uh, opportunity to see what you really found interesting, what you really enjoyed. And then the remaining five stations are probably going to be more scenario based and you're going to have to solve a problem which we propose to you. What I would always encourage is whenever you're answering a question through the application or indeed our interview, um, make sure you give us enough context to show that you are applying knowledge, experience, skills that you have by talking through the situation you're in, the task that you uh, had to uh, overcome, the action that you undertook and the result of that action or the actions of the team and apply that to the question being asked. Hopefully, if you do that, you will demonstrate the skills uh, required to be a veterinary student and to be a vet. And because of that passion and enthusiasm which you have, then that will uh, resonate throughout all of those interview sessions uh, which you go through. So hopefully that gives you a whistle-stop tour of the Royal Veterinary College, our five and our four year program with regards to veterinary medicine. Um, we have uh, up here our contact information. If you uh, can't think of any questions now, uh, feel free to get in touch with us. We are more than happy to answer any questions or and or queries that you may have. So the First question is, can I transfer from a community college in the U.S.? And also, what program should I take to transfer? I think they're wanting to know what courses they should have. So with regards to transfer, we don't accept any transfers uh, into any of our clinical programs. So being a university, we would need either a student to come with to us with our required uh AP qualifications in terms of um, the biochemistry um, plus another um, AP if you're coming through uh, US high school or you've done an undergraduate degree program with a 3.4 GPA uh, along with the prerequisites that we ask for uh, in terms of the uh, semester credits. Yeah, the community colleges are not universities. They're two-year colleges, so you only could get an associate degree, not a bachelor's level. So Yeah, so, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say... But I think what you showed there... Yeah, so we would we would be needing, um, as I say, either the the APs or or the, the degree um, certification to join our program. Uh, with regards to all of our entry criteria, it's based on predicting success within our program. If anything, you if anyone uh, watching this uh, video is slightly unsure, then if they email us a transcript or an unofficial transcript, then we can go through that because everyone's slightly different. And then we can go, yes, that would be access, uh, eligible to apply or actually we would need you to take these particular qualifications yeah i would just say this at a at a community college if you take your general chemistry organic chemistry biology courses you know major for the majors um i think you would be in a good company but i would just say send your transcripts i think that's the but you you, you never you could never go wrong with taking those courses um, we don't, I think most community colleges don't offer biochemistry, I think, uh, at an A level, at the, at a, um, 
but yeah, I'm I'm not sure exactly like um, how that would work, but um, as you say, I think if in doubt, email us submissions at rvc.ac.uk, and then we can have a look through those transcripts um, and uh, give you a, a personalized answer to um, to your aspirations. Uh, it's this person saying next year they're graduating with a degree in science from a university. Um, I will leave that to you. Sorry, I'll just open that question. Uh, um, uh, Q and A. Next year I'm graduating degree in science. It works. Okay. Um, I'm not quite sure what it works means, but in like what 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 school are you graduating from, and what degree? I think if you could put that in there, uh, I think it would be a better. So whilst you're perhaps typing, um, uh, we would be looking for as uh, as this slide suggests for a, a science degree. Um, um, we'd be looking for a, a 3.4 GPA overall and within the um, science elements of the, the degree program, as well as all of these prerequisites which are listed being completed. So um, I think, again, goes back to the community college question a second ago. Yeah. Um, if you send us your transcripts, unofficial or official, then we can have a look through everything that you've done and um, say either, yes, you've done everything that um, would predict success on our course, which is, as I say, what our entry requirements are, are based on, uh, and as such, you'll be eligible to apply, or we might say you need to pick up a couple of semester credits in and then give you... Uh, XYZ. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I'll just go back to q and A. Is there's, there's any other question? Our pleasure. Is there anything else um, that we can answer today? Um, the other question I have is, do you have residencies in England too, like they do in the US after postgraduate? Yep. So we do um, both internships and residencies at the RVC. Um, so yes, essentially, Um uh, we have a range of options available uh, and we have students again from around the world uh, coming to undertake those uh, those programs. Um, so, yes, we do small animal pathology, production animal uh, and exotic as well. Uh, and then another question, do you have international rotations? So, so in terms um is the so i'm gonna cough <clears throat> our is that international students coming to do our rotation schedules or our students going internationally to undertake some of their places yes the latter but we have both available so um some years we have students from ross and St George's in the Caribbean coming to do uh, the last two years of our program, essentially, uh, to get that clinical exposure. With regards to the extra mural uh, clinical placements, so those 20 weeks of placements that we mentioned um, earlier on in the presentation, uh, typically North American students, for example, will return home at some point in order to undertake placements in their home country. Um, that's not a requirement, but most students like to do that because they can go home as well as gain a bit more insight into the profession within the country that they're most likely aiming to practice in once they have graduated. Okay, so this is not this is not a question for um. Uh, I think I don't have any other questions. Um, if anybody else has any questions, you could just email admissions at rvc.ac.uk. We put that in the chat. And thank you again, uh, Ms. Drops. And if you, I will send you an email. If you could just email me the presentation, I'll just put it on our website as well. Okay, fantastic. All righty. Thank you very much for your time. And 
and I know it's late in mm-hmm. it's 11 o'clock at night, so we'll let you go. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity. <laughs>